Okay, I am sick of it. I see so much garbage advice and opinions about TIG welding online. So today, here, we're gonna squash some of this. Let's go over some of the most common myths around TIG welding and we'll see if I can debunk them. Okay, first one here, and this is a good one. And this one will always sound like the saying that you sometimes hear and that is, TIG welding is really hard. Now, for starters, what exactly do you mean by hard? Like it's like almost or pretty much impossible? Or basically that like some random person could just walk into a shop, can't pick up a torch and be able to do it immediately? If that's the case, then yeah, I guess that's true. But to learn to TIG weld, is it honestly really that hard? Nope, I disagree with this one strongly. Look at this example of TIG welding here, check this out. This TIG welding here is done by a dentist. No, honestly, for real. The person that did this is a dentist with zero experience in TIG welding. Now look at this example here. This stuff is done by a software computer guy. Pretty cool, right? This stuff here is done by somebody who works on a movie set. Awesome work. This stuff here is done by a CEO of a major company. Absolutely mind blowing, come on. All of these examples that I'm showing here right now are people that I have taught with zero welding experience before. And honestly, I have like 100 other examples of stuff like this, it's crazy. These are people from all walks of life and all different careers as well as experience. These people basically just literally got an interest and wanted to learn how to TIG weld. Then they joined me to start working with me in my program where I teach them. You can see that there is both aluminum and stainless steel stuff here. We can even see some crazy fabrication projects. Look at these, these are sweet. Now I will reiterate that not everybody started at the point that you're looking at there but I helped them with my approach that I taught them to learn from the bottom up. And you wanna know the crazy thing? They had an absolute blast trying to learn all this stuff. I always take the experience of teaching somebody how to TIG weld and I make it as fun as possible when somebody is learning. And wow, learning to TIG weld, whether aluminum or stainless steel, is always a challenge for sure. When you take the right approach to learning, learning can be a lot of fun. Now, I would say honestly, the most difficult part of learning how to TIG weld is knowing where to start. We are working with different types of metal, all types of different consumables and different ways you can set up your gear. There are so many different joint configurations that you can learn with TIG welding. And putting all of these variables together to get results like the ones you're looking at here can definitely be a challenge to learn. But honestly, I feel like I have proved it. There is a formula that you can follow to learn. Some people it takes a little longer to learn the formula, some get it right away. But the fact is, if somebody sticks to it, they can absolutely learn. You have to start out with the right welding exercises and the most important part is it has to be fun. For example, if you try and learn something that's a little more challenging and you have not learned the basics that are supposed to come before it, of course it is going to be challenging and the results that you're trying to get will not work. Typically, honestly, from what I find, this is the common myth that people get stuck on. What happens is they try it out and they think because they don't see immediate success or the results that they're hoping to see right away, this just means that it's way too hard to learn so why bother? Straight up, that is BS. I guarantee that if you start out learning the right exercises and practicing the right things ahead of more challenging stuff like this here, you are gonna be able to step up and do this type of work much faster. So I guess, in my opinion, if you start learning the right way, learning will not be that hard. It will for sure be work that you have to put into practice, but with the right approach, as well as trusting the process over a given amount of time, you're gonna have a much easier time learning and you're gonna have a much better success rate when you start to get into the more challenging stuff later on. Seriously, somebody can save so much time learning. If you learn the right way, TIG welding is work, but not hard work. Ooh, those are bars. Now this next myth is something that scares a lot of people off before they even make the move to try and start learning. And the next myth that we're gonna go over here is TIG welding is expensive. Now the myth that TIG welding can be expensive can be true in some circumstances, I guess. But to be honest with it these days, I kind of disagree with this one as well. Now to get started here, let's think about everything that you need to get started with TIG welding. Obviously you need a machine, helmet, gloves, safety stuff. Then you're going to need material to weld, filler material, gas, definitely some tools that will help make a few things easier. Uh, oh shoot, we also need a table, and maybe even a bunch of accessories that you see other people using that looks really fun to try out. Okay, wow, actually that added up pretty quickly. But wait a second, let's find a way to make this a little bit easier for ourselves. Now, as far as welding machinery goes, it's actually never been a cheaper time to actually pick up a machine and get into TIG welding. When I first started to learn TIG welding a long time ago, this was the best machinery or technology for TIG welding available at the time, pretty much. This was a transformer type machine. At that time, inverter type machines did not exist yet. Getting a setup like this was gonna cost you somewhere around at least $10,000.
And that was just for that machine and the basic accessories that came with it. Now take a look at these things here. I've done hundreds, maybe thousands of demonstrations with these machines. As well as I've set these things up for heavier weldment and different projects here I've done in my shop. You can see that these are just a fraction of the overall size that they would take up in your shop or garage. They have way more settings and more versatility than the machines that I learned on back in the day. So with these things being super compact and having like tons of different settings and stuff you can use, they must be more expensive, right? Let's take a look at the prices of these and find out. Wait a second, what? Yes, my friend, you do not have to break the bank in order to get a setup and get going with TIG welding anymore. I have been a professional TIG welder for over two decades now. Going with a machine like this that I have at my shop here has more than anything I will ever need to do in my shop. And you can see from these examples here the kind of different work that I can do with it. And like I mentioned, you can get these set up in your garage, your own home shop, whatever. Seriously, the times are different. There is no need for any giant machines or anything super heavy duty like that anymore. Obviously you will if you might need it for industrial type setup or whatever, you get what I'm saying. But even though I grew up using kind of old school transformer type machines and I do absolutely still love them, operating out of my own shop on my property here is absolutely just perfect for me with this stuff here. And check out all the accessories that this machine came with as well. The fact that you can get set up with all of this stuff right here out of the box and literally be welding away on serious projects the same day that you got it is absolutely crazy. Obviously when purchasing stuff, you can't get away without welding, without a helmet and safety gear and stuff like that. I know some of you would try, but you don't have to break the bank on that kind of gear as well. You can find cheaper options that work better for your budget also. The same is with machines. There's gonna be big name brands that are definitely way more expensive than others. Obviously, this will be really nice, high-end quality stuff, but I have used other helmets and stuff from brands that I absolutely trust, and these will retail for much cheaper than you would probably expect. Do your research on stuff like this before you purchase something. Take a look online at social media. You can see all the fancy brands that a lot of people like using. It's way too easy these days to get set up with a budget that works for you. Now, obviously, you can see the crazy table that I'm working with here, but look at what I got started with. Literally, this is just a couple sheets of steel. I put them on top of these old rickety tables and I was up and running right away. I got some clamps to help me line things up and keep things nice and straight. And with the setup that I started with in this little shop here, I was able to get some really awesome projects going. So taking a look at like my fancy table, as well as the fancy gear and accessories that I have for welding, I guess that this could kind of transition into another myth that's out there. Basically, if you haven't picked this up already from what I've been talking about, you do not need fancy gear to get good work done. Like we just talked about with my table, having something like this is unbelievably awesome to have in your shop. It totally allows me to do jobs that I literally would not be able to do if I didn't have it. The same could be said about this fancy gear here. We have lightweight torches with much better dexterity. These feel awesome to hold in your hand. We have specialty TIG welding cups from Edge Welding that give you better visibility and really good gas flow. And like we talked about, this amazing helmet that lets you see with crystal clear vision. Being able to weld and work with this stuff obviously is absolutely awesome but we already went over how quickly all of these things can add up on your credit card statement. So if you're on a budget, we can get going without any of this stuff. We already talked about getting a machine that is insanely capable of anything you could throw at it as far as jobs you need done. Again, looking at the Everlast machine here, check out all the accessories that it comes with. It's crazy. These stock torches that came with the machine are honestly completely fine to use. And even though they might not have the same feel or dexterity that like fancier torches might have, when I first got the machine, I actually used these torches all the time. I got a ton of work done with them. Same as these cups here. Like I mentioned, I absolutely love these things. But I can set up and run some really clean stainless steel stuff using just a basic gas lens set up with a cup like this. Dare I say, even getting going on stainless steel using a basic diffuser setup. If you know how to put everything together properly and set it up correctly, you can use a basic setup like this and get some really good work done. Getting good work done with aluminum TIG welding with a basic diffuser setup is completely cool as well. It's kind of like I say with all the fancy accessories and gear and stuff that you can upgrade to, this is kind of just meant to complement the hard work that you've already put in. In some cases, this stuff is gonna make it a little manageable to get some more consistent results a little quicker, especially when you're learning, but this stuff is not going to do the welding for you. As long as you have put in the work to learn the fundamentals, like the stuff that I teach in my program to my students, even the most basic setup with your TIG welding gear can get some great work done. Okay, so far we have done a decent job of poking some holes in these TIG welding myths, but there's one more that I continually see and this one drives me crazy. 
And this is, it takes a long time to get good at TIG welding. Now, this is some advice that I was told when I first started getting going with learning to TIG weld. When I was first learning, this is kind of like some of the work that I was doing here. Essentially with stainless steel, there was a ton of problems I had to figure out when I first started. But honestly, what the hell was this advice talking about? I was just supposed to hang out for years with my work looking like that. And then all of a sudden after a certain amount of time, it would start to look better. Come on now. Now I have talked about this on my channel here on YouTube before. TIG welding should not have a barrier of entry where somebody's going to have a terrible time practicing doing bad work over and over and over and getting super frustrated. Having no success, getting super discouraged, this is not the way that TIG welding is supposed to start. If somebody's having a bad time getting up and running, learning anything, how is anyone going to have any fun and continue to stay motivated to learn? People that I've worked with and different students get motivated when they see success. Again, going back to more students that I've worked with here. The results that you're looking at right now, this is only after working with me for a handful of weeks. Come on, a handful of weeks. We just went through a series of exercises to start with. We started working on the most basic stuff. And like I mentioned, my effort to make everything fun and achievable along the way. Each student, when they went into practice, had a clear idea of exactly what they were gonna work on that day. And everything that I gave them as far as what they were going to practice was something that was super achievable. Once again, having fun while learning and making your way into progress like this over a matter of weeks or so, this kind of stuff took me literally years to learn when I first started. Following along with some kind of curriculum or some kind of learning material when you first get started is the best way to learn. Now, on my website, I have two free classes that you can register for and take right now. They are both actual real classes that I teach to people in person and I have for years. There's one for aluminum, there's one for stainless steel. They are on demand so you can watch them whenever is convenient for you. If you have not checked them out already, go register for those classes. They are a blast to take a part in. Now today, I hope that I've been able to dispel some of these TIG welding myths for you. If you have an interest in learning how to TIG weld, I genuinely hope that today's episode was something to motivate you and get you excited. This type of welding is an absolute blast. It's too fun not to be a part of. Jump into it. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty James. Phil and chill. We will talk soon. Peace.